Thank you, Tom. I, uh, I did have something in my office today. I was just making some little notes here, and I knew I had something uh, written here I wanted, to, I wanted to say. And that is, you know, anything that happens to us, we regard as being a personal tragedy. You know, we tend to magnify our own problems like this thing. As I said, I was very lucky. And I hadn't been out of the hospital, I think, one or two days, and I read about the terrible accident that Richard Pryor had, uh, in which he had severe third-degree burns of almost half of his body and is in the hospital out here in the valley. And I just wanted to wish Richie Pryor from all of us, from everybody, especially who know him, because uh, the man is a remarkable performer. And if, if you knew Richie Pryor, he is, he's a unique individual, and he is probably going through uh, a, a lot of pain with this, and uh, just want him to know uh, that we're all thinking of him and hope he is, he is up and about as, as soon as possible. Right. Anyway, my first guest tonight, uh, Carl Reiner's here tonight. Carl does everything in show business. He's a performer, a writer, a producer, uh, an actor, a comedian. Uh, 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 an ashtray. That's right. Mm -hmm. a, uh, pencil. A pencil, yeah. a coat hanger. Yeah. He also, he directed The Jerk, which is a big hit, made a lot of money. Would you welcome Mr. Carl Reiner? <laughs> Was this? Oh, the pain in the leg. No, Take I couldn't. It easy. I couldn't have done that two weeks ago. I know. I wouldn't want to. Have, I wouldn't have tried that two weeks ago. That's that's amazing, and it's it's also amazing how I'm puffing after two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not that old. I'm not that bad. Really, I'm I'm very excited about being here. Yeah, thanks for coming. That's nice. I know you're busy. <laughs> well, I came for. I mean, I'm I'm. And not everything is altruistic in this world. I came because it was your. First day back. Right. I want to be a part of that. I really do. I, I miss you when you're not on. Thank you. And I also thought there'd be a big party. Yeah. <laughs> I really thought the way they were talking, how important it was for all your friends to be here. I, I thought the best of Carson and... group would be here, that Burt Reynolds would be here and Dom DeLuise and, uh -huh. and Ed Ames, all the best of Carson people. And you know how I'm trying to be part of that group. You really are. <laughs> I went so far as to cut your suit up last time. You actually destroyed and, the uh, uh, rather... Uh, look how they applaud violence. They like that. <laughs> and Zachary All and his people wanting to cut <laughs> you up suits. Uh, you thought that that probably, that uh, would outrageous me, behavior would, would make get, the best of Carson. Yes, and I realized that it, and so far it hasn't. I watch almost every night, uh, every Tuesday, I watch to see who's on, hoping that I'll be on the best of Carson. and. And last week you were talking about gold way up at $165 an ounce. I saw that show. Yes. I said 224 dollars And that actually, was only yeah. a year and a half ago. I know. And well, anyway, I, I'm wondering what it takes to make the best of Carson. And I realized it doesn't have to do... No, it's very important. I, I, it's a, it's a, it's a, a absolutely... A, it's my holy grail. Becoming it's a something, phobia It's now. a phobia with me now. Ah. Um, and... I think it is not the performers themselves, although Dom DeLuise was hilarious and, yeah. and, and, all, and Burt Reynolds, but I think they decide, I, th I have a feeling they decide to do the best of Carson when you're best. And I oh. thought that after the hospital, you'd have the best monologue. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. It was just, <laughs> it was all right. I mean, it's all right. What do you mean? But it's not. It's not going to make the best of cars. I thought that was a fairly su it was su good. substantial. Well, I yeah. hope it's good enough for you to repeat it because then I'll be on the show. But I think that's what it is. I, I see. think who chooses? Did the court ever choose it? Well, we sit down you and sit rather down. usually say, what, what have we got left that we can oh. put on? <laughs> and and uh, I never get in. Well, gee, I'm sorry you feel that way, well, but I've you know. Got, I've got something. <laughs> No, I, no, no, I'm trying to think of something original, something that's never been done on the show before that you would want to see. You, do, you wouldn't. No, no, no. Oh, nothing violent. Violence, no. Violence does not get it. Violence does not make it. We found that out. I cut right. your suit up. I could... So you've been circumcised? No, you wouldn't want to... See. No. I, it is my contention that uh, the most comic of all fruit is the banana. Uh, it is a comic fruit. I would tend to agree. Yes. Yeah. 
I have never seen... Steve Allen, I think, has written a small book on, really? on the yeah. funny uh, fruits. Yeah, well, this is a funny and fruit. Did a great but book. I have never seen you, I've never seen Dinah Shore or Mike Douglas or, or Merv Griffin or any or Barbara Walters or anybody interview anybody while eating a banana. You notice how oh, I said I, that Bronx... That's Bronx banana. Banana. You used to have a banana on the sofa. Yeah. You'd sit now, on the sofa. Now, I would think... I would think there would be some humor in that. I mean, we'll just do a general interview, whatever we're gonna do, just but eating a eat the banana, and, but let's get close-ups of you eating the banana and eat it, <laughs> but eat it, eat it carefully. Well, wait, now wait, and, I, and let's, and, and I think that I am also doing you a service. There's a lot of potassium in a banana, and That's if you've true. just gone through a, an ordeal and every little bit of uh, Minerals, a uh, mineral and nutrient you can get, uh -huh. so, uh, do you, th you think uh, this could be kind of a, a test, the way a person peels and eats a banana, shows something oh, you know, insight into his character? Or? Bef as a matter of fact, it is. I'm going to tell you something about it later. There was the funniest eating of a banana, which I'll save for if this doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Already you have a saver for, <laughs> called the banana saver. <laughs> now, you should have a close-up of John when he eats the banana. I don't really think there's anything. <laughs> is something? This is a very strange-looking <laughs> banana. <laughs> I also wasn't quite sure where it was headed, you know. It's, <laughs> it's a, you know what it is? It's a relaxed banana. It's it, not. That's, that's a relaxed banana. Yeah, okay. This. <laughs> well, it depends on, depends how you hold it. Of course it does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Okay. Uh, now, <laughs> now, 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 just. just well. Just let's have an ordinary... Well, oh, I feel ridiculous. I... <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I, will, I will eat no banana before it's time. Uh, <laughs> we'll take a break. I'll be back here. <laughs> You just join us. I'm Marlon Perkins, and this is Jim Fowler, and we've been feeding the wild baboon. I don't know uh, how that w worked or not. I suppose it. Well, it, it, well, um, you we never did. You never did interview me with a mouthful of banana, but I think we'll save that for the next. I think, I think, I think it was. Right. Uh, uh, I don't know if you people are aware <coughs> that Mr. Carson has not lost his wit while he was at the hospital. He was he was holding the banana, and the banana fell off. He didn't push it off, and he came up with the hardest thing in the world to come up with a punchline to a sketch. He's, I will eat no banana before it's time. Every comedy writer in the business says, my God, it must have been written. It wasn't. I want everybody yeah. to know that Mr. Carson has not lost it. <laughs> they, can take, they can take away my iliac, but they can't take away... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they can't take away your that funner, or your funner. I, want, I was talking about... Have you ever been in where you've been under anesthesia? I was under a very a different kind of anesthesia, I guess. I thought the old days were where they put the, the mask yeah. over and you went completely bonkers. This time they gave you, a, in, they do it in the hand. Well, intravenously, yes. Right, intravenously into the vein, and uh, they put in liquid Valium, and then a little pentothal. And I want to tell you, <laughs> if they could legalize that stuff, yeah. they would never get me out of the door of the hospital. Because <laughs> you are absolutely, you know, yes. somebody could come in, uh, the, the, the Boston Strangler, yeah. you know, with, a, with a, a coat hanger and said, I'm going to strangle you. Yeah, you yeah. go right ahead and do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I, I, even, if they, even if they did legalize it, I don't think you would want to stay in that state every day. No. This show would be rather boring. You're sitting here. Yeah. 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 It wouldn't be a but good... But you really do, I guess. I know. Ooh. Well, that's why people take drugs yeah. for that, those wonderful moments. But the price you pay... Yeah. No, you couldn't exist yeah. that way no. because I was strung out for three or four days after that, still having the effects of that. Your voice is a little higher. <laughs> No, I think it's for the fact you haven't performed in so I long. do remember, <laughs> as I said, you're in the twilight, and oops, I did not know who, I did not know who said that. I thought it was, I do recall a definite oops when I was, and I do remember when I first came out of the surgery, somebody saying, maybe we could fix that out. Or you might, like you that. might try this, go <clears> like this, <throat> <clears throat> do that. <clears throat> now let's hear. You know what I think it was? A frog in my uh, throat, which they also took out when I was in there. Or put one in. I never noticed that. Was that was it a little high? No, uh, we were in the uh, in the in the uh, 
little green room. Right. And either the treble was... I wouldn't want to do anything to you surgically until we fix the set in there. Thank you. We should try the set first. Yes. Yes. That's always safe. To avoid <laughs> surgery, if you, can, if, you can, if you can solve the problem with the bass control on the TV, yes. never have surgery. That's right. It's a rule to live by. Uh, what have you been doing lately? I have not seen you. From, well, um, I understand you did your usual, I, uh, although I couldn't be there this year. You emceed the Big Brothers Yes, uh, I did the Big Brothers. I again. did the Frostig Foundation tennis tournament. Right. Uh, I'm here to plug nothing. I really am here because I am happy to be considered one of your friends uh, you who are. come on your show. And uh, I, I'm, I'm here just out of friendship. How I, is your I'm, tennis game, by the my way? My tennis game is uh, brilliantly mediocre. By that that's I mean honest, I, I do appraisal. everything rather consistent now. I, I'm, I consistently hit the ball over the net. In, in all, uh, my yeah. volley is good, my that's serve good. is nice, and I would like to play you now. I think I'm ready to play you now good, that you're like not crippled that. anymore. I didn't, never wanted to take advantage of you when you were <laughs> hobbling about. Do uh, you realize how many guys I can call and say, you want to be played six months ago and you beat me? Oh, really? And cop out because yeah. I said, well, you know, I had that at this time. Yeah. I wouldn't do that, though. No. You better start with new people. I'll, I'll take you on. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, one of the things I do on a court, though, differently than... A, I curse differently than anybody else on a court. You know, it's not... not you know, tennis is supposed to be a gentleman's game, and you're not supposed to curse. People go f as far as saying, shoot. You know, no. oh, shoot. Or darn. No. And I really scream on a tennis court. Really? Yes, I do. When I hit a, an overhead that goes into the net is the most frustrating of all shots. I mean, you're right there at the net. The net is two feet away from you. Instead of keeping your racket back, right. you move it forward and smash it hard right into the net. And I curse, but I make up my curse. What do you mean? You curse well, I, 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 I'll find language. I'll see, uh, and nobody knows. And in my head, all those marvelous, terrible words are going through, but everybody's laughing. And I'm very serious. That is my literal translation for all those horrible words. And they're laughing. They think, but I'm dead serious. It's curse. It's cursing. That's nice. And it's therapy. Yes, it is. I recommend it to anybody when you're in a situation where you can curse, make up your own words. Nobody will blame you. It's a That Exactly. Yeah. That, that's, that, that'll yes, work. Yes, it says it. Remember? Ding this thing, ding the thing, ding, 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 ding. Make noises. Zil Nalawan. Zil Nalawan. Zil Nalawan. Zanja Salva. It's Kushni. It's Kushni. <laughs> all works, all works. <laughs> but it's the same effect. The parsley. You know, yeah, we, ought, we ought to put out a dictionary of curse words that don't offend. Yeah. Like Nakushni. Yeah. Or, yeah. Farsnar. Farsnar is too close. <laughs> <laughs> Nelfak. <laughs> Nelfak. 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 Yeah. It like, <laughs> sounds like Al, late Al Kelly, right? Ding. That's a good sound is good too. Yeah. You know, I, I was reading uh, in that hospital, you, you really start reading everything. And I meant that about the cards and letters, and you, you watch television, you watch the daytime stuff. There was one commercial that st I started to watch, and I would see it. You know, and hemorrhoid commercials. I got very conscious of, and it's always the guy, it's the customer going to the druggist. And they're saying, have you, have you got anything for, uh... and the druggist goes, yes. And the guy goes, I've been driving the truck all day, you know, for, for hemorrhoids. <laughs> and he says, oh, certainly, preparation H, and he reaches back, and then the druggist, to illustrate how the product goes, says, you know, preparation H shrinks those hair. And I said, that's the biggest hemorrhoid <laughs> They're just illustrating, of course, shrinks, swollen tissues. And I said, that man has got a monumental problem. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it just occurred to me as you were talking, why are some diseases funny? Now, I hemorrhoids is the most painful thing of for people it to have. It's not funny. I, I've heard them, people say it's excruciating. But you say that word hemorrhoids and everybody laughs. It goes if you back, say appendicitis, nobody laughs. It goes back to our upbringing. You're talking about those forbidden parts That's right. of the anatomy. Yes. That when a little child, yes. everybody go... But uh, uh, wow. venereal diseases don't get laughs. No, and those happen no, to those, those parts. Are, but they certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, believe it or not, I'm not making this up now. I saw the jerk in the hospital. I had not seen it before. I'll oh. be very honest with you. And somebody sent the cassette over, and I found myself really cracking up. There was some crazy nutty things happening in that movie. I'm glad you saw it. Yeah, and it made, I understand it, I, last time Steve was here, I kept putting him on. Yes. That how big box offices yeah, was, and uh, Steve kept explaining how the expenses ate up yes. all of the profits, yes. except $1.37, I think <laughs> it was. 
Uh, has he changed because of the success of... Uh, sometimes people do. They make a big no, hit, no. and all of a sudden... No, Steve is a very consistent human being. I think he is the same guy he was when he was selling programs at Disneyland. He's been working well, he since he's that. a kid. And a slow rise. He is very, very successful now, but his success came very, very slowly, up an inch at a time. And everybody thought it was an overnight success, but he struggled from the time he's a kid. He did magic acts. He uh -huh. sold magic right. uh, at Disneyland. He sold um, uh, guide books at, of Disneyland. And he... He worked very hard, and he, uh, his success has not changed him at all. As a matter of fact, one of the things I like so much about... a plane back to Vegas. Back it to is Vegas. so great in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. no, really? <laughs> no. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got this stuff there called uh, alcohol. Alcohol. <laughs> And they give it to you if you win money ah. from them. <laughs> Listen, I got a split. <laughs> I got to go back. It's so nice to see you haven't changed, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I want to tell He's you. He's a regular guy. I got to be me. I got to go back to Vegas now, Riviera. Welcome Thanks back. Thanks for dropping in, Good Steve. Good to see you again. Huh? Another show business story of a young man who's the same today as he was when he first started. No matter, no matter how much I like the guy, I don't want to sit on his ice cubes. That's right. That's why we have put a reversible cushion. But we just turned the cushion around. That's right. We're fine. Yeah. Thank you, Steve, for dropping, for falling in. We'll be right back. Stay where you are. <laughs> 